Hello Internet and welcome back to my Sky Island playthrough. On the last episode, gonna be real honest, I have no recollection of what we actually did in that video. I don't really remember despite the fact that it was yesterday and I haven't edited the footage yet so this is probably gonna be the shortest recap I've ever done. I know that we did things around the base, we were just tidying things up, we put up some new zones to store our food and things like that, and then we headed down on another expedition, not really sure what the intention for like the expected goal was for that expedition and I do know that we stopped when we saw three Zomborgs which is where we're gonna pick up now so everyone welcome back sorry about that terrible terrible recap but that's where we are here today now in the last episode we did talk about the Zomborgs a little bit and I expressed that I was not very familiar with them so we were gonna look them up now unfortunately due to the nature of Sky Island we're probably not gonna ever get around to using any CBMs and these creatures are basically CBM pinatas to my understanding that is like the whole reason they were added to the game was to give a place to still find CBMs after they were largely removed from like a vanilla just regular buildings things like that and I'm not familiar with them so a mix of dead human and even deader technology the twisted mess of steel and flesh moves like a puppet in the hands of an angry toddler its robotic components seem to have shut down and new bands of flesh have wrapped around them tugging and pulling them in awkward directions bits of metallic skeleton and armor plating jut from its decaying flesh flesh. So it looks like they do 2d6 bash damage plus 12 cut is actually pretty insane. Uh, that extra 12 damage is very significant at, the, at this stage of the game. They have a bite attack, a grab attack, a scratch attack, and then 125 HP and enormous armor for like a vanilla creature. This is obviously because they have like metal skeletons and things like that. And based on that armor damage alone, I don't think we're going to fight these guys. Remember, we're using the Dory Spear at the moment, which means we deal primarily pierced damage and armored creatures tend to be pretty like beefed up against piercing damage piercing weapons do have some i just don't remember i think it's on a critical hit you get four times armor penetration don't quote me on that it's it's not exact but it's something like that so we do you know if we get criticals is pretty significant but our skills are pretty low at the moment and we don't have any of the uh what are they weak point proficiencies so i don't know how relevant like our weapon is going to be against this thing so between the armor and the enormous amount of cut damage that gets added to every single attack i don't know if we're actually going to fight these guys i don't know what our cut armor looks like at the moment pretty sure we're wearing a kevlar vest should provide us some benefit but and then the 40 vision radius also is a little alarming i don't know if you can see that once i zoom in here i'm trying uh, i zoomed way in so you can't see the enormous number of prs that i have open in various tabs in this uh, particular browser i'm trying to do research for my experimental cataclysm video so i have a about a million PRs open. Anyway, let's get back in the game here. Okay, so we see three Zomborgs. If it were one of them, I would chance fighting it just to kind of see how we do against it, but three of them are going to be problematic, and remember, we're in a field here. There's no cover. There's no uh, beneficial terrain. There's really nothing like that for us to deal with, so what I would like to do is we know there's a building up here, and I don't know if there's stuff inside of it, and we don't know where the entrance is. I'm going to keep these guys on the outskirts. Oh, excuse me. I hiccuped. I'm going to try to keep them on the outskirts of my vision radius because we do see slightly further than them i think the player vision radius at maximum is like almost 60 tiles or maybe it is 60 tiles i don't really remember actually they're at the edge of our vision radius so if we just look here yeah they're 59 tiles so it is uh, about 60 tiles here and if their vision radius is only 40 tiles that means we can see them when they can't see us so what i would like to do is skirt north and see if we can maybe come in this building from a separate entrance and as long as we keep them on the very periphery of our vision, looks like they are moving kind of in this direction, we may be able to see where the door is. And that would enable us to possibly, I mean, there's just no cover. Actually, what's the penalty on these? 450, that's pretty good. Um, that's a very high movement penalty that we could use to our advantage because there's so many of them. But I'm very wary of taking on three of them at once, especially because we're wearing our cataphract leggings and our dory. So if we were to die, we would lose those two very high value items. There's a sign. Uh, does this, can we read the sign from here? It says hours for a little while. Okay, don't don't 100% know what that means. We have not seen the entrance. It looks like this tile is slightly different. I think that's just what it looks like at the edge of our vision radius. I don't know where the entrance would be or what could possibly even be in there. I'm hesitant to move any closer to these craters over here. 
because uh, craters are, you know, they're not great. I'm not sure if they give radiation. I don't really remember, but uh, we, we don't want to fall in a crater, obviously. So, yeah, we still don't see an entrance, huh? All right, well, let's uh, keep them away and let's move to the west and see if there's an entrance on that side. Body shivers slightly. We have a warp pulse going through us. Yeah, so it doesn't look like there is an entrance to this. It just says metal wall. I assumed this pod was open somewhere and would have stuff in it, but it looks like it's just these Zomborgs. In a casual playthrough, I would lure them one at a time and try to deal with them, but because the only terrain that we can use to our advantage is so close, I would be very worried that they would hear and come fight us. I just don't want to fight you with a spear. I think it would end with us taking a lot of damage. We, we can try to lure just one. Is there any other terrain here? No, it's just a huge empty field. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna try. Well, what's your speed? I didn't even look at your speed. It's much slower than us. Yeah, I'm, we're gonna fight it, but we can't dissect them. So like, what, what is even the purpose of fighting them? We don't have the time or tools. Um, man, okay. People are probably screaming at me, telling me what to do, but all right, let's try to just pull one of them. Have you still haven't spotted me? We're going to use the building kind of for cover here. Let's see if we can just pull one. You you moved? Okay, where are you, bud? Now you see me. Let's uh, wait and see if we can just pull one of them. I'm wary to drop my backpack. It does say much slower than me, so presumably we would be able to outwalk it. and We wouldn't have to sprint necessarily. So let's just drop our backpack. Yeah, I guess. We'll drop our backpack. Let the Zomborg come to us and use this... I mean, they're pretty fast, and we did pull two of them. It says much slower, but they're moving basically every tile. I'm going to look again and see what their speed is. It says their speed is 60. Um, I'm just surprised that they're getting to move basically every single turn. I mean, I guess it is like every other turn. We're going to, if we deal like zero damage in our attack, I'm going to just pick up the backpack. 31 damage, but that was a critical. 13 damage okay and they had what 150 hp i just can't imagine they drop loot right they they wouldn't have loot on them because they're just these weird robot things the whole point is to dissect them i mean i guess i could look at their loot drops i should have looked at their loot drops uh... Okay, so let's look at their loot here. Their drops, a spring, a heavy disposable battery. I mean, we don't have any heavy batteries. Lumps of steel, RAM, antenna, power converter. Yeah, so they're just like full of random crap, I guess. And you would think you would get most of this from dissection or butchery, not from loot. Why would it, uh, why would they drop like a heavy battery as loot instead of from dissecting them or whatever? Butchery results, tainted human skull. Why would it be tainted? It's not, oh, it is a zombie. It's a zomborg. That's right. And then here's the dissection results. This is obviously the main appeal here would be all of these enormous number of CBMs, but yeah, no, we're not going to fight them. This loot is not worth it. We're going to step around, try to grab our backpack without getting... It's going to take me a minute to put this on. They're going to hit me. Oh, they didn't move at all. Oh, that was very easy. Okay. We're just going to leave internet. Probably most of you knew that who are experienced players probably would have told me that that was a waste of time, but, but I didn't know. I didn't know. So we're just going to walk away. They're going to get left behind in, uh, as they, you know, just, they move much slower than us and they'll lose sight of us after a while. In fact, they should have lost sight of us. So if we just pivot North, they should continue in that direction. Oh, did you lock onto my scent? Is that why you're still tracking? They'll, they'll get lost. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so I think this expedition, when we first started it, I said we would come down and try to butcher an animal for some meat, which I think is actually a terrible decision because we have no way of preserving that. I should have made this a priority to try and get like a, a fridge or something like that. And we, you know, could have had started setting up some kind of food preparation back on base. And of course you can craft a freezer in the game. I don't have those recipes because I'm not uh, particularly skilled 
at this point of the game. We don't really have the electronic skill or the mechanic skill or whatever that would be to, to set that up. So tied down freezer, what is this? A disconnected freezer, long cordage rope. I don't know why this is a tied down uh, chest freezer secured to the roof for transportation. Not functional, but easier than carrying it with your hands. Okay, so we could throw, basically throw a freezer on the roof of our vehicle for easier transport. You can disassemble freezers if we were to find a location in the game that had a freezer in it. We could just disconnect that and take it as an appliance. But again, we don't have any way of storing the dory. So unless the actual freezer would uh, let us put a dory inside of it and then wield the fridge or freezer itself, we're probably not going to be able to do that. And that is a possibility. We will look at a fridge's volume. It's possible like the, it could store an item of this length, but I, I sort of doubt it. Probably we should be coming down with the baseball bat uh, every time. I don't know why I brought the dory in hindsight. A shooting range, We I think they have gun safes in them. Can you cut a gun safe with an acetylene torch? Oh, I never put the acetylene torch in my inventory. Ah, oh, I told myself I would bring that for safe cutting, but okay. We're just going to go to this light industry, I think, because it's like the nearest thing that could potentially have a vehicle. We'll head up to the road. Is that a radio tower? We probably should hit that up as well. And then just so many Zs. Look how tiny this town is. And, and there's a Z on every single square. Oh, I wish this were different. Uh, in addition to being very difficult to navigate because it's right on the river like this, it's also just kind of frustrating because obviously in a small, tiny town, there's not like a hundred zombies that would be there. So I, I don't know. Why don't we, we can head over. Well, let's go to the light industry first because it's possible we would find an acetylene torch or something that we could use to cut open the gun safe. Uh, if there is even one at the shooting range, which I kind of thought there was. And then we'll pivot over here. Well, see, the thing is we want to go north and cross the bridge if we want to loot this town. And then this is, what is this mission? This is the warp draining horde. Let's... I mean, just for like circuitous purposes to kind of make this make sense, let's head down here to the radio tower and stuff first. I guess uh, my chair's extra creaky today. Sorry, internet, I can't afford a fancy chair. It's like a four-year-old chair that I have. Anyway, so uh, today, something interesting today, I uh, used to, so I'm gonna talk about a YouTube channel and at the end, I'll tell you what the channel is, but I wanna be really clear, I'm not like vouching for them. I don't know if they're a good person or a bad person. I very rarely mention content creators unless they're like huge content creators that people already watch anyway. But recently I had a video pop up in my feed, which was a Cataclysm Let's Play, which I never watch them because it's like, I make a lot you know, of content for the game. I just don't really spend my time watching that type of content. And I did, of course, when I first first started playing, I, I watched people play a lot to try and learn the game and things like that, primarily Vormithrax, of course, uh, before I made tutorials, before uh, like Worm Girl made tutorials, before all of that, it was pretty much just Vormithrax. Another pair of binoculars, which is great because we do need that for a craft and we'll take the survivor's map as well. We'll read that once we get back down. So let's pop down here. Check our vision radius, zoom out. Wow, we are just in a, a very, very rural area that has almost nothing of interest around it. And because of this town being surrounded on like three sides by, by the river and being so many Zs, I don't know that we're actually gonna get into that town to be able to do much. Oh, the refugee center, man, it would be nice to go trade for more ammo. Maybe we should make that the priority. I don't know if we find a vehicle at the industry, we can probably make it to the refugee center and back without too much issue, although we don't have much loot to trade. But if we don't find a vehicle, I suspect we will not be able to hoof it over there and back very safely. So I don't know what we will do if we don't find a vehicle because I'm not hoofing it into this town full of Z's probably. I don't know, man. We might just have to be happy that we were able to loot the light industry and get out of here in two hours. I don't know. All right, but let's check the shooting range. Anyway, I used to watch Cataclysm content because I was trying to learn the game and because I 
at that time, I hadn't discovered very many content creators, so it was something I watched a lot. But anyway, nowadays I get pop-ups and it'll be like, um, someone will say it'll be, you know, their first playthrough and they'll have, you know, 70 views or something like that. Very small, you know, uh, content creator who just hasn't really gotten started yet. This is the Norwood Family Shooting Range. Congratulations. Uh, open sunrise to sunset every day besides Sunday. Of course, we don't want to shoot on the Lord's Day. I mean, jeez. All right, so shooting targets. Looks like uh, maybe range markers are these signs here. Can't see any of them. 10 yards, 15 yards. Uh, interesting that that would imply every tile is... Okay, it doesn't matter. Distances in this game are weird. And we have the soil backstop, I guess. Okay, well, there's going to be a lot of casings and no ammunition. We, of course, cannot cut this gun safe at the moment. We don't have any of that material. We have the American flag. Guess what? I don't want that. And it looks like we have a corpse nearby with uh, the mail carrier hat, bikini bottoms. This is odd because there was just a change to the game to make bikini bottoms spawn less frequently oh i didn't update that's right i have not updated yet so i don't have that change in the game that makes sense okay okay so let's see what we've got here a pair of earplugs sure we'll take those and then basically nothing else because we cannot cut this gun safe i meant to bring the acetylene torch with me but i forgot yet again so that's a lot of fun anyway so i have uh, pop-ups every now and then from people trying to make you know cataclysm content and it's usually uh someone with like uh sometimes it's a person with a heavy accent like a uh, like I think we have a big Russian community and I just have a hard time understanding like I know that sounds terrible but like I struggle to understand like the thick Russian accent sometimes so I, I don't usually listen to those uh, and then other than that I mostly just don't watch the content so I don't really care about cataclysm content but today uh, I got a pop-up for a video that had like 200 views and to my surprise, I recognized the name of the person because this is someone who made a lot of net hack content like 10 years ago. Feral humans, zombie hunters, uh, pretty alarming. I didn't even know these guys could spawn here. I always thought the light industry was clear. So not only have the feral seen us, but the zombie hunter has as well. They have a leap attack. I'm not sure what their deal is. I think they deal a lot of cut damage. I don't really remember, but they're a relatively base level enemy. We're going to fall back, of course, to the forest to try and fight them. And then we will try to loot the light industry. There's no vehicle here. That's, oh, there, there we go. So we will have to get close to see what this can do. We'll have to see what the engine fault there is to see if this is drivable. Not optimistic about that. Uh, if we could see a fuel tank from here, it does have gas in it. So presumably, you know, if the faults are okay, this should be drivable because we saw a battery in there as long as the battery is not leaking, which I think it would say here if it was. Anyway, we're going to fall back try to find some terrain here to work with not really any clustered bushes that would make this easy but we'll we'll do what we can here there's four of them we do have the pistol if we need it i think the zombie hunter has a high dodge as well let's have a look at their entry it's been a while since i've seen one of these okay zombie hunter mildly dangerous barely able to believe this thing was ever human it scrambles about on all fours nails and teeth sharpened into dangerous looking spikes yeah so 2d4 bash pretty standard in fact it's a little low plus two cut of course because it has the cut damage but it has a scratch attack that deals 12 cut damage which is uh quite a lot actually but again we're wearing a kevlar vest should have decent cut protection not 100 percent on that uh or the cataphract leggings not sure about them dodge of three is pretty Pretty annoying i think ferals have about a dodge of three as well and then uh really no armor so it shouldn't be a big deal upgrades the zombie predator nothing special about the flags and then just drops regular uh loot here so yeah not a not a big deal just very mobile i guess 110 speed but the leap attack allows it to cover a lot of ground very quickly it can leap you know four or five i'd have to look it up but i think the the tile range on leap is usually like six tiles i, I don't really remember what the the, the default is i know you can manually set it up to like 10 tiles or something like that but i'm not sure uh what the default is for this basic leap attack here anyway so not a huge concern that one should break up pretty easily that should reach us before everything else i'm a little worried about fighting all of them kind of all at once because they're two ferals which are gonna so basically the hunter's gonna reach us first the feral is gonna follow actually these are just regular zombies i'm a little worried about stamina trying to take four in a row but we can um oh would it be better to use this central these are all 400 um 
Yeah, but if we go north and we expose to more enemies that we haven't seen yet would be concerning. So I do think these clusters of bushes are better terrain. But we're going to fall back to the forest because that's a little bit more, um, like basically retreat in a safe direction. And then we can wrap around the front of the building if we need cover or to try and flee and break them up further. Yeah, okay. Anyway, that hunter's going to reach us very quickly. So let's just move back here. Yeah, you're already catching up. Let me get behind these bushes and drop my backpack. And there's a good chance it'll leap over the bushes, but we'll try to get it on the bush here. You hear brush. I don't know the best place to stand for this. We can reach you there. Uh, and you jumped, so that's one. We are not going to pulp the corpse yet because that feral should be coming. Where is the feral? No, I wanna see the monsters, please. Feral human is somehow behind the tough zombie, which I didn't even see the tough zombie previously. Why are you behind that when you're so much faster than the tough zombie? Okay. We're going to, man, this is unfortunate because we either abandon the terrain, which will give us, you know, the 400 move penalty, which is really good. But if we use this terrain, we're going to take rocks from the feral, which are very accurate. They always tend to hit the torso. It seems like it always manages to hurt me despite my armor. So if we do that, we take the rocks from the feral, but we're in a better position to kind of manipulate the tough zombie. If we retreat around the building, we then have the ability to kind of wait for the feral to come so we won't be pelted with rocks, but then we're exposed when it comes to the tough zombie because we'll have no terrain. But I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna back up around the building here. Okay, I didn't know this had a glass front as well. Well, so if there are enemies in here, we're going to be exposed to them, which we really don't want. But all right, well, we'll wait for the feral. Up oh, top zombie went into the building. Man, you're either it's a separate one or you're way faster than the feral for some reason. Let's peek. No, it's just two top zombies. Yeah, that's the danger of going around the glass front here because it's probably going to come out and fight us. Yeah, sure is. Okay, so we're going to continue falling back. Gonna try to put down the tough zombie before the feral comes around the corner. And you know what? Uh, oh, there's a lot more of them. Okay, I still don't think we're, like we're not in danger really. You know, we're still in a position where we're controlling the situation. I'm just worried that the more we fight, the lower our stamina is gonna get and the more danger we're gonna be in. I think the zombies will get stuck on the building a little bit. We can, I just, I wanna deal with the feral. The feral is obviously a much more dangerous enemy. No. I think we retreat north at this point. We see the tough zombie. We see more zombies. We're getting the horde music. I'm going to continue up. Oh, we saw a huge horde in there. Huh. All right. What? How do I want to approach this? This is like uh, way more than I was expecting. And this is why you don't retreat in an unknown direction, by the way. People are always asking for combat tips and I never really know what to tell them. So basically the engagement went like this. We were up here, we saw some zombies in the east building and we were like, oh, well, we don't want to be dumb and expose ourselves, you know, by going up here to fight on these bushes because every enemy in both buildings would be able to see us. So instead we retreated southwest, which is a really smart thing, and we should do that. That's the right, cor correct thing to do. And then I wrapped around the front of the building thinking this was a solid brick wall, and in fact it exposed us now to like nine more enemies. So obviously, you know, always retreat in a direction that you know is safe. I think we just head north around the building. If the ferals come and we want to fight the ferals, we can do that. But these bushes at every window should slow them down uh, at least a little bit. So we are going to just beeline north. Looked like a zapper zombie, zombie technician. I don't think the technicians have the magnet hands anymore. Getting horde music. Where do I see these? Just for, okay, just to the south here. And yeah, generally the other, you know, combat tip I would recommend, just just walk away, just wrap around buildings, let them get stuck on terrain. Some of them are gonna move into these bushes and be slowed down. Some of them, like the overweight zombies, are much slower than the other zombies, so even just retreating is gonna break them up based on their speed. The ferals will take the lead, the tough zombies will follow, the regular zombies will follow, and then it'll be like the, the overweight zombies far behind. So I think we're gonna do, we're gonna walk over to this vehicle and see if we can get this thing up and running. That would solve a lot of our problems here. I would really like to deviate and fight the feral but i think for now i'm just going to keep walking and we can use the vehicle as cover if it uh if it catches up to us too fast so let's have a look at the vehicle it is leaking gasoline not really a problem the batteries are in good shape let's make sure it has a seat and controls it 
does have controls it has a bucket seat is there a security system unfortunately the security system is intact that is a bit of a problem won't let us start the vehicle without the key or it'll set off an alarm but let's check the faults actually so if we go to mend what faults do you have expired air filter that just means it produces a lot of smoke as we drive not a big deal at all it might be in the cab but i'm pretty sure it just still outputs it outside the vehicle so that would be fine let's pop in here uh the vehicle parts are very slow so we will of course be slowed down a great deal when we do this fails to start fails to start throws a rock fails to start starts up so let's get out of here we're gonna run you down if we can uh we got no display part at mount negative four regular four we're gonna ignore that we're gonna slow down we're gonna turn and our goal now is to grab our backpack and get back on the road uh i suppose we can just run over a lot of these guys actually let's let's do that let's retreat out we are leaking gasoline it does not matter because we actually have two tanks you turn off the engine that was the wrong button i meant to examine the vehicle turn off the engine take control starts up okay yeah i wanted to examine the vehicle here so we do have a leaking tank which is leaving a trail of gas behind us does not matter because we have two tanks and this one has 18 liters that's plenty of gas no problem so this vehicle thankfully solved a lot of our problems otherwise we would have some difficulty going back and picking up our backpack but now we're going to just start the tedious process of running over basically everything and uh we'll sift through the loot a little bit and then try to get back Back to looting this is probably going to burn a fair bit on our expedition timer but yeah i just want to do this in a clear area where i'm not gonna be hitting lots of obstacles we see fowler's toads i don't even know what that means i don't even know what those are i would like to deal with the feral first if we're able here okay that's one uh we'll just keep driving i mean like at this point we're just trying to thin the horde up oh, and we swerved into bushes why why did that happen <laughs> What do we, what is this? Cube wing mirror disconnected. Your cube van recovers from its skid. So it looks like the mirror, the mirror of our vehicle hit the bush, which caused us to skid and drive directly into the bushes. That's amusing, actually. I didn't know that was a thing. Anyway, um, yeah, so today I had a pop-up about uh, a content creator on YouTube. They had like, I don't know, a couple hundred views on some of their videos uh, and I was surprised because I recognized the name of the YouTube channel because it's someone who made a lot of NetHack content content like 10 years ago, which I watched all of their NetHack content. It was like, um, I guess it was his wife, like it was like him and his wife both were working on the channel and like, uh, like she had a Let's Play trying to ascend, he had a Let's Play trying to ascend. I think he successfully did. I think it was a samurai and he successfully uh, ascended, which, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with NetHack, ascending is like you beat the game. I've been playing NetHack since I was like eight years old. I have never ascended uh, because it's, it's well, one, because it is actually pretty difficult. Um, NetHack requires a great deal of um, like meta knowledge in order to progress and to really succeed. You have to kind of know like, oh, well, this is this wand message. And oh, if I drop this in the shop, it comes up for 5,000 gold, which means it's this wand and, and that sort of stuff. Very meta heavy game that you really kind of need to know what you're doing in order to succeed. And most of my time playing that hack, I was like, I don't know, eight to 11 years old, not really, you know, particularly good at the game. Like, you know, when you're a kid, you play for fun. And when you're an adult, you become much more of like an analytical personality where you're like, oh, if I do this, I get a plus two to this and I'll be more likely to succeed and blah, 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 blah. Whereas when you're a kid, it's just like, like, oh, I love broadswords. So you use a broadsword and then you realize it's like the worst damage weapon you actually had that whole time. Anyway, so this person, uh, like eight years ago, made a bunch of NetHack content that that I watched and I enjoyed because most NetHack content is like super terrible and not very entertaining. And I liked him and his wife or girlfriend or whoever it was. And, uh, and yeah, so I watched a lot of that content back in the day. So I was very surprised to see them back because they quit YouTube like almost 10 years ago, it seemed like. And I was very surprised to see not only were they back, but he is playing Cataclysm. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I checked it out. The The audio quality is, is quite low. Like um, I imagine, you know, after like seven years of not doing YouTube, you probably forgot how to do most things uh, or maybe you like sold your equipment and now you're back and you're you're using a, a cheap mic or something like that. But yeah, this, the quality is not super high, but like 
I don't know. I, I love that this person that I liked previously is not only back, but they're playing the game that I've like devoted my life to at this point. Uh, and I just thought that was really cool. And I will shout out the channel here. Let me look. In fact, I'll just pull this over here. I was watching uh, their first episode back, which was uh, December 2023. So yeah, it's uh, Slash MVC. They played a lot of uh, NetHack back in the day. I'll open up their their page here and i want to be clear i have no like i have no affiliation to this person i'm not uh friends with them i don't know who they are i you know are they a good person a bad person i have no idea all i know is they've been playing a lot of cataclysm which i i love so i thought i would uh shout them out because it was kind of neat to oh yeah there's the samurai run that ascends i think Good for you for ascending in, in that act. Anyway, yeah, it's just a tiny channel that popped up on my radar and I left them a comment and I don't know if they know who I am. Like I never know, do people know that I'm like a huge part of the Cataclysm community? You know, I, I don't know, but. So yeah, I thought that was super interesting. We we don't have a lot of content creators, you know? It's it, like I was, it's the same thing. When I saw that Worm Girl was starting to make content, it was just like, I don't know, part of me was like jealous, I guess, cause, cause they, you know, had like a, a huge, couple huge videos that went, really went well and, and had like hundreds of thousands of views. And of course there's like that innate jealousy of like, man, I've been here for years and I don't get those kind of views. But then also it's mostly just like, oh cool, we have another, you know, person playing this game making content for this game when i first got started there were like two people making content for this game it's just really cool to see that this has continually expanded you know and more and more people are playing all the time more and more people are discovering the game there are more reviews there's all that kind of stuff like i think rock paper shotgun for a while there was doing like an article every year about how we're like the best like ascii type uh, like roguelike style game so it's just cool it's just cool to see more recognition more people being interested and uh and of course it expands options for people like you who watch a lot of this type of content uh so yeah check them out if you're interested i again just want to be clear not associated with them never spoken to them never uh like i don't know for all i know they sacrifice babies to like demons or something in their free time i have no idea so it's not a vouch for them it's just something interesting that happened today why is there a magnet what what do i use a magnet for small but strong permanent magnet made from al nico alloy which i assume is aluminum nickel or something no why would it be nico i don't know what this is produces a magnetic field that attracts ferromagnetic materials such as steel useful for crafting sure never seen that item before but we'll take it more bikini bottoms uh yeah did not update to get rid of those i guess i didn't pick those things up yeah we'll take the heroin and the magnet i guess and uh, yeah i guess we'll sift through most of these i you know i really wasn't going to but if we're going to try to swing by the refugee center and trade now that we have a vehicle we we should probably grab a lot of loot here just to take with us as trader fodder and try to buy as much ammo as we can basically man look at all that gasoline we made a lot of there was a lot of driving to kill i mean it was a lot of enemies man if we look like can we see easily how many corpses are here corpse good lord okay it's quite a lot of them and some of them would have been destroyed as well from us driving over them and things okay I guess it seemed like a lot more when I was doing it. It was very slow going. I don't know. So here's the thing. I don't, let's, let's mark on the map. Let's just write a note and be like, we already looted this so that in the future, like I'm not going to pull ball these corpses because I think it will take, I mean, I guess it only takes a few seconds. Let's, what do we, 957.17. So let's do this. Okay, it takes three seconds. We'll pulp them. I was going to say, we'll just leave them here because it's time consuming, but actually we'll we'll just do it. It's easier. Anyway, let's uh, get to looting here. And we should just take anything that looks like it might have some value. Toolbox, we're not taking such a large box. We'll take the wallets, I guess. We should be just looting wallets. Probably is easier than sifting through them one at a time. Don't really need the battery. Actually, we do need light batteries for that one upgrade so let's strip the batteries out of these random uh electronics here doesn't matter that they're low charge we're just going to use them for crafting and then do we have to drop did we pick up the items that we unloaded we have the light batteries in our inventory and we did not pick up the mp the uh, game system or anything like that that's good news take the cigarettes they might be worth something and we do need prescription materials 
like um, medications for one of the upgrades. So we should be taking basically every medication we see anyway. And we should keep an eye out in case there are other enemies. So we have a Glock 31, which is a 357 Glock. Uh, not, not really what we want because we don't have any ammo for that. And it doesn't look like this creature had uh, extra ammo on them. It looks like they were just down to three rounds here. We, of course, will take it. Uh, oh, I need to pick up my backpack, of course. Forgot my backpack. So we do see a couple zombies here, and we will. There's probably a few that are still on this side of the building, but uh, we can just hop in the vehicle if we have to do that and uh, quickly deal with them. Yeah, anyway, I thought that was pretty cool just to see someone that I used to watch suddenly show back up after, like, I think in their, uh, like, first video, they said something like, I'm back after five years, but... I looked at the timer and the thing I looked at and used to watch was like eight years ago. So I don't know. It's interesting. It's an interesting thing. I just love, you know, look, we, we all love this game. We're not going to pretend we don't love this game. It's cool to see new people experience it. Like I, I try to, you know, in the dev discord and all that stuff, I try to be very helpful with like new players because I want more people to be aware because this game's really good, which of course you, you know that because you're watching this content, but I just want more people to be aware it exists. Like if we, like if my group of friends had this when we were young, we would have played the crap out of this game and we would have talked about it for weeks and been obsessed with it and all that kind of stuff and it's a shame that we didn't know about it back when it first released because i think all my guy friends would have loved this game and now you know they're off in their lives somewhere probably never think about zombies anymore and it'd just be cool to see more people you know get expanded into this this wonderful game i don't know it's a good game Okay, this sifting through corpses is going to take a minute as well. So this is an episode of tedium with the driving back and forth and then uh, slowly looting everything. So that's a UPS. We can't take that. We're seeing these random materials, the antenna, the power converter. I, I want to take them because we do want to craft electronics in the future. I just don't know if I like need them, need them because our current electronic skill is quite bad. So we're not going to be using them anytime soon. Looks like we fully destroyed this uh, carcass while we were driving there and we We've got uh, gasoline pipes. Yeah, so driving over a lot of this stuff is like pretty bad. We do need rollerblades for a craft. If I have a look at my cheat sheet here, what do we need? The uh, Oh, that's too tiny to read. We can just look in the game. Uh, so we do want the rollerblades because they're for one of these Sky Island upgrades. Let's have a look at what that would be. Upgrades, do, do, do. Okay, so for the escape charm. Now I did talk in the last episode about how we don't have the like next stage of upgrade yet. Someone left me a comment was like, yeah, you have to unlock some of the lower tier upgrades. So like maybe I have to unlock this escape charm in order to get the next uh, step of whatever. And then they also suggested it might be not until you've accomplished 10 expeditions uh, before they would be unlocked automatically. I don't know if that's true or not they didn't seem like they were sure but that's still good insight so like i'm happy that they thank you for leaving that comment basically so for this we do still need a crowbar which is going to be a problem because we're not going to be able to craft it and most of the time it's too long to be carried back with us very easily i also don't know where you really get them and then a windbreaker is pretty easy to come by but i'll have to remember to pick that up so we found the rollerblades that's good as long as we keep finding items that work towards an upgrade i'm pretty happy let's unload this uh handheld game system we'll take those batteries for our upgrade as well we'll just head down the line here i actually have no idea how long i've been recording okay good lord it says it's been 44 minutes i should call the episode i know we're like mid <laughs> mid uh, loot here and we didn't really accomplish very much anyway yeah they're called slash em vc just uh if you're interested uh and i'm hopeful that their like audio quality and stuff improves and commentary and stuff improves as they continue playing or maybe in a week they'll stop playing and never play it again i have no idea really but yeah i just thought that was interesting because it's it's like it's rare that i come across a a, a new like cataclysm person and then it's also rare that someone who used to make content like six seven years ago and left comes back out of the blue is also very strange so pretty interesting i thought and just to record a little addendum here or expansion to the uh, youtuber that we talked about in this video they actually responded to my comment which i thought was very nice and uh they actually knew who i was which is also very flattering i know it's kind of weird they're a smaller youtuber than i am maybe i shouldn't be flattered by that i don't know but it, it felt really nice to have a little bit of recognition from someone that i used to watch and i also just wanted to say that their audio quality and their video quality has improved since those early episodes i think i commented on 
on it being not so good uh, earlier in this video. So I just wanted to record a little addendum here just to clarify and, and to say that they did respond to me, which was really nice, probably the highlight of my day. So yeah, I don't know if I fangirled in this episode or what, but uh, yeah, thought it was interesting. Definitely like a fun thing to have happen. So anyway, we should call the episode. We're way over time. Everyone, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I, of course, will be back in the near future with even more content, and I'll see you next time.